is sticking with tech. It's day one of the Microsoft Build event. Our Dan Halley is in Washington at that conference in Washington State, that is. Dan, what can you tell us about the event so far? Yeah, Julie, I'm here in uh, Seattle at the Seattle Convention Center. Uh, we had Satya Nadella take the stage as well as uh, Kevin Scott and special guest Sam Altman of OpenAI. Uh, essentially what the, the big to do here is, is AI. I know you guys are just talking about NVIDIA. It's trickling everywhere. And Microsoft, obviously, with their, their team up with OpenAI being a huge beneficiary of it. Uh, the, the big deal here is them getting uh, GPT-4.0 into their Azure suite, which means that com uh, companies will be able to build their own kind of co-pilots, which are essentially AI assistants using GPT-4.0. And so that's a huge deal for Microsoft to be able to offer to its customers. In, in addition to that, uh, they talked about how uh, they're building out uh, GitHub as well, uh, and they're going to continue to offer uh, various co-pilots uh, across its different offerings. But really, I think the, the main deal here is that GPT-4.0 is going to be available right away uh, for Azure, and that's something that Microsoft really does have as a big uh, benefit over the likes of someone like Google uh, or Amazon. And Dan, so you're there right now, and Microsoft executives, they're on stage, you're talking chat, GPT-4.0, giving demos. How should we expect how that technology, Dan, is going to just kind of change the way we interact with our computers? Yeah, I think the, the big deal with, with this in particular is the, they, they call it multimodality, but and really what that means is that you'll be able to use video, uh, voice, and text. And it's the video aspect that's really uh, kind of fundamentally different than what we've had uh, before. There's been uh, video offerings uh, in the past, but the way it, it, it all comes together in this package is truly interesting. And so uh, some of the ways that they demonstrated uh, on stage in, in some pre-recorded demos, albeit, uh, was uh, a uh, developer uh, having trouble with a code. Uh, they were you know, doing their coding, they couldn't figure something out. And so they pulled up uh, the co-pilot on their, their phone or uh, powered by GPT-40 and they said, hey, what's wrong with this code? And they use their camera to show the AI, uh, the code on their computer screen. And then it was able to say, oh, hey, why don't you try changing this aspect of the code to get the outcome that you want? And so those are the kinds of things that really start to get you thinking about what does the potential future uh, 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 of this technology look like? It's not just, hey, ChatGPT, make me a dumb poem or something like that. It's really a fundamental difference now when you add in the video uh, as well as the voice. And so I think that's where a lot of companies are going to end up going. Now, obviously, the, the big question uh, remains as far as hallucinations go. Accuracy, that's something that they're continuing to work on. Uh, there's different technologies like RAG that they're using to, to cut down on hallucinations. And the more they advance, the, the fewer they'll be. Uh, that being said, this is still one of the, the most interesting technologies to come out of this. And as you were talking about NVIDIA, it's going to need to be powered in some way and NVIDIA right now is the, the one that's doing it. Indeed they are, and we're, uh, in case we didn't mention the reporting earnings after the close tomorrow, <laughs> I'm not sure if we know that. Dan, thanks so much, appreciate it.